um, it took me a long time to appreciate that this man who's pulling off his mask here is not stupid. In fact, he wants to live, right? How many of you have met this person, right? You've met him, right? He's pulling the mask off and you're thinking, what? You're thinking, like, WTF, like, put the freaking mask on. It's helping you, right? You have this argument with him. Sir, it's oxygen. It's helping you. And what does he say? I can't breathe, right? And what, what do you think? You know, when I was seriously burned out in emergency medicine, I can tell you what I thought. I thought the guy was trying to die on me. That's, that's very egocentric. When I was in a generous mood, I would say, well, you know, the man might understand oxygen, but because his brain is now deprived of oxygen, he's not thinking clearly, right? But when I was really mean, I thought he was either trying to die on me or he's just stupid. And in Emerge, there's lots of stupid. I mean, I've seen all kinds of stupid. Um, really, I mean, you guys see this if you're in Emerge, you, you see stupid. Stupid is not rare. Stupid is in fact often present. That's what lands them in emergency, you know. Drinking power tools, you know, not good, you know, like all kinds of stupid. So I used to think this man was stupid. But what if he were to say to me, Professor Levitan, are you aware, sir, that this non rebreather mask that you have attached to my face is delivering 15 liters a minute? And in fact, the negative inspiratory flow in my trachea and severe respiratory distress is 30, 40, 50, 60 liters a minute. Therefore, sir, you're not meeting my negative inspiratory flow needs. Excuse me. <laughs> Furthermore, Professor Levitan, are you aware that this non-rebreather mask, in fact, does not have any CO2 absorption mechanism? This isn't a diving system. This isn't the OR. You're not being cared for by Dr. Christensen or Dr. Teo or Dr. Ducanto. There is no flush valve here with continuous flow, um, you know, that's going to then absorb CO2 uh, when you exhale. In fact, sir, by clamping the mask to my face, what you are doing <laughs> is actually forcing me to rebreathe my exhaled carbon dioxide. The effective inspired oxygen by clamping this to my face is in fact only 55%. Excuse me? <laughs> Furthermore, Professor Levitant, are you aware by holding the mask here, in fact, sir, what I am doing is I'm blowing O's up the nose and it is not blocking my air egress. In fact, sir, my inspired oxygen holding the mask in this position is higher than the, what you're asking me to do. Holy crap. You know what I've con c concluded after 25 years of watching people die in front of me? They want to live. They want to live. <laughs> people want to live. And we have not paid attention. What we've been doing in the airway game, I was taught my whole career, head tilt. Head tilt, right? Open the airway, tilt the head. Has, how many of you have ever seen anybody in Emerge come in going, I can't breathe? They do not show up looking at the ceiling. If you want to swallow a sword, you want to swallow a sword, put your head back, swallow the sword. But that's for sword swallowing. <laughs> for everybody else, the head is forward relative to the chest. People ask me, what's the right position for airway management? Just look at nature. Look at what patients do. So if you bring your head square, straight back, try opening your jaw. It doesn't open very much. <laughs> But with your head forward, your jaw just lollygags open. You know, you look at the highest aerobic activities on the planet. I, I haven't done enough climbing in the Alps. I, I regret it. But I have been around the world above 20,000 feet half a dozen times. I used to think it was in exhaustion and fatigue that I was carrying these heavy packs and I would take a step at 20,000 feet and I'd be bent over. And then it was only 10 years ago, prone positioning. Holy smokes, you look at the fastest animals on the planet, cheetahs, racehorses, you look at things that go fast, their heart sits on their sternum, their posterior lungs work. There is a reason on the Tour de France when you are, you know, you're going over the high Alps, you're breathing through your nose and out your mouth and you're in a prone position. How long did it take medicine to figure out what animals have evolved over millions of years? You know, it, it's fascinating. I think we have been fighting what has been right in front of us. I am looking out at you and you are all breathing through your nose. You're not breathing through your mouth. How long did it take us to realize that O's up the nose is the key? The first thing when I see somebody in respiratory distress is a nasal cannula. And I'm not talking a fancy nasal cannula, I'm talking the 50 cent nasal cannula. Um, 
So 50 cent nasal cannula, just a regular one. I can turn that flow rate up 15 liters. But when you get to jet speed, in the US, it hits about 70 liters a minute coming out of the wall with a standard 50 cent cannula. It's amazing. Now, if you have Vapotherm, if you have Airvo, if you have the high flow humidified, but we should be breathing through the nose, not through the mouth. Um, so I, I think the patients know better than us. You know, this woman who I took pictures of laying flat on her back, after a few seconds, she said to me, this isn't very comfortable, I can't breathe. There is a lot of weight on her chest. The top of her lung is collapsing the bottom of her lung. Her diaphragm is up here at the nipple line. That's bad. I set her up, everything falls forward. She goes, wow, this is quite comfortable. She was being admitted for cellulitis. She rolled upstairs and we got a call from the charge nurse. The patient wants us to rebuild her ramp. Is this a new thing in the ER? Um, anyway, the patient insisted for the next three days that her ramp be rebuilt. But, but I think we just need to look at nature. We've been fighting ourselves. The patients do know better than us.